We're on the road again. Follow us as we travel around the northeastern parts of the wheat belt area of Western Australia. We meet some amazing people with interesting stories and have a look at a bit of the history of the region. We stay in some amazing campsites. We go from freezing our backsides off to sweating the same backsides off in the heat. Then get sent packing as a wild storm approaches. We stumble across a private collection of artefacts and go to some amazing museums. And disaster strikes that almost finishes some of the group members' holidays before it starts. So come with us now as we ride the Wheat Belt Way. Look at this. This is why you go camping, eh? Not a cloud in the sky. Last night, the wind had dropped right out. There was no wind. It was bloody cold. This is the first morning we've had where um, there's been no cloud or anything around. It's been cloudy uh, or foggy and that sort of thing, but it's just such a perfect morning. We're pulling up camp here at uh, Bearer Budding Rock, thereabouts, name down here. Um, we're only going to go, go about 27 kilometres down that way to another quite popular camp spot. So, um, and we're going to spend a couple of nights there. But as I said uh, earlier, this is a quite a popular camping spot here, um, and I can see why. I mean, you got sort of gazetted sort of um, parking areas in here, little places you can pull in. But if you go down the track down there, follow that track, it probably going to go 500 metres or something and it and, and can comes it comes out back on the on the main road again. Um, well, I don't know if you call it the main road, it's a gravel road. Um, but all through here, it's all little spots you can go camping. Uh, the only downside to going up there is the toilets are down there. So, uh, or toilet, but it is a flushing toilet because you've got this water tank here. Got to have some use out of it, I suppose. Um, I guess they also use it for uh, fires as well because it's got like an attachment on the tank there to uh, keep water from fire trucks. Um, but uh, yeah, a really nice campsite. And I mean, there is a road just across the back here, but you know, you probably hear about four or five cars a day. Absolutely brilliant spot this. Could probably come back here again I reckon. Anyway, hopefully it warms up a little bit today. A little bit more than what it is. As I said, it's a bit cold. And uh, we're going to go that way. So we'll see you soon. halfway through the trip everybody has the breaking camp process down pat. We scurry around like ants getting the job done in no time with no fuss. Except for the camera falling off the tripod. Do you remember how to fold this toilet tent up? Now that we are using the little Hyundai i30, there isn't a lot of room for swags and the like in the car, so Pat has kindly offered to stack them in his house for the girls, the truck. One 
last check of the campsite, make sure there's no rubbish or anything left behind. And we're ready to go. I was really sorry to leave this camp, but looking forward to the next one. Before long, we're on the road with the convoy falling behind me. Just down the road from where we camped the last couple of nights is uh, this campsite. This is Alec, Alec Butting Rock. Uh, supposedly it means think, uh, something standing. Um, but uh, is, we're going to be here for a couple of nights, just like the other place. Flies are bloody bad here. But amazingly enough, there were no mosquitoes at the other one. So I'm hoping the same here, no mosquitoes or anything. And um, today is, like I said earlier, a brilliant day. It's even hot enough in a t-shirt today because um, it's nice and warm here. Um, yeah, flies are bad. But um, this is a big camping area. You look at it on, uh, on, uh, with a drone, you can see a huge area. And that I can tell, um, apart from us, there's only one other campsite, which is a little bit further down there long way away from where we are so effectively got just about the place to ourselves so um, we're doing really well here just go for a bit of a walk around here I'll show you what I mean uh, how it's, uh, it's big, but big open well sort of open area plenty of trees though but Plenty of room to get your solar to work. Um, just like the other campsite, this also has flushing toilets. Now the other one had the big water tank. I can understand the um, flushing toilets. I'm not real sure where this place gets the uh, the water from, but uh, needless to say, it's a uh, very refreshing to have flushing toilets does stink a little bit but um, I don't know why but uh, it's clean water everything and it's a nice clean toilet too but uh, this is the next sort of open area around from where we are I won't go any further that way in, uh, in front of me because uh, somebody I can see somebody's pulled up and camped there now when you come into this place as you enter in off the road as you come in You'll see the road goes forward and there's a road to the right hand side. You, uh, you've got to go straight forward and that'll come all the way around. It's a one way road, it comes around through here and past here and then comes back out on the other side of the rock again. Um, and that's how you get to the camp area. I'll show you this area around here. every so often they have these concrete pits down here where you can um, have your uh, fires every so often they have these uh, benches we've got a metal one over there there's a wooden one here a bit older and a concrete barbecue over there you can see in a few places where people have put fires on the ground which you're not really supposed to do but, uh, and you've got another big area over in that direction too 
here's a little map here. So you got Darren, Walcash, and where we went through, quarter, bed cupboard, where we got some fuel, and then off the beacon. This is where the car broke down, and then from there we had to drive all the way back to Perth to uh, get the trailer and uh, drive back up here, pick the car up, go back to Perth, then come back, end up spending two nights at the Beacon Caravan Park, and then uh, we came through to that was the campsite for the last two nights at Berra Booting, Booting Rock and then this is where we are now. Uh, when we leave here we're going to try and see if we can get into a caravan park at uh, Westonia because uh, while well, I've got a shower in the caravan <laughs> the other ones ain't so uh, they're kind of hanging out for a nice shower so we'll try and see if we can get into there then we're going to come through to here uh, Muck and Boudin um, we're going to head north again towards um, Ben Cubbin, which is here, uh, hang on, where are we? Uh, yeah, we're getting a, um, yeah, I think we're going up here somewhere first, and then we're coming down. We're going to uh, camp again at another rock down here for a night or two. Got an interesting stop in there, which I'm hoping to have lined up a, um, a bloke to uh, tell us a little bit about it. And then uh, that's getting close to the end of our trip. So we're probably at least halfway through it by now. This up here, this is all top northeast corner of the West Australian Wheat Belt area. Then around this side, you've got the map of where we are here. That's the rock. Uh, we're camped here. Going to go and have a look for this Pioneer well. Uh, we'll go up to the lookout later on. And then uh, because this is a bit of a hike to get it back around here, um, we might leave it until the day we leave, pack the caravan and everything up, and then drive back around through again, and then park up, because there's a parking area up here. Park there and then walk in. We've got a couple of interesting formations to have a look at in there. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much this area done. Let's go and have a look at the rest of the campsite over here. So as you can see, it's just a lot of space out here. I won't go any more that way because I've just seen there's actually a campsite over the back there. So um, we won't go over there. And there's a caravan down that direction. So we're not quite alone, but we're pretty close. But certainly no neighbours in the near vicinity anyway. So uh, let's go see if we can find this well. Well, we didn't find the well, but like the other rock, there's a walk to the top. There is no phone service at the campsite, but if you really need to make a call, like to a caravan park to book your next stop, then you can do that from the top of the rock. Out that way, about 15 kilometres, is the edge of the wheat belt area. Behind that is where the mining country starts. That's 160,000 square kilometres of wheat belt area. That's almost the size of Victoria, a little bit less, but bigger than some countries in Europe. As you can see, while the rock is long, it's not very far across. There were a couple of things we wanted to look at on the other side and wondered if we could find a way across the top of the rock to the other side. Let's find out.
little bit of toing and throwing, we finally found our way off the rock. Now it was time to start bush bashing, keeping the rock in sight on our right so we didn't get lost in the bush. Snakes were another thing we had to keep our eye open for. After about 10 minutes, we found the walkway to what we were looking for. That's no, a rest spot, it's got a seat. <laughs> the wave would be on the edge of the rock, but I don't think we would have had much luck in through that there. Wave Rock. Not quite as big or as well known as Haydn's Wave Rock. Short distance away is Monty's Pass. This is basically where a piece of the rock has split away from the main rock slid down and created a pass through the rock to the other side. And what is on the other side? This cave was probably used as a campsite by the early Aborigines to keep out of the heat of the day. You could feel that it was several degrees cooler in here than at ground level. Just watch out for the giant lizards. Not wanting to go back to camp over the top of the rock, we decided to go bush bashing again and find the main track that brought you into the camping area, which probably took us about 20 minutes.
Well, after our killer walk this morning, climbing the rock, I thought I might uh, just go through a couple of my products I've done reviews on before, a bit of an update on some stuff. So, uh, to start with, down here we've still got our two Kings um, solar panels. Got one going to the caravan, one to the car, and they're uh, quite happily charging the, uh, the batteries. There's no problems there, they're working fine. I've got uh, inside here, I've got a projector, uh, 25 amp DC DC charger which the solar panel plugs into, that's working fine. I've got a D, uh, King's uh, battery monitor down in here and I can see on that currently um, 4 amps going into it at the moment. We're just about to lose the sun here so the panels won't be working for much longer. Um, same inside the uh, the caravan, same kind of arrangement uh, with the um, projector, DC DC charger, and the uh, King's uh, battery monitor. Just re just before we went away, we added this uh, King's uh, awning, the 270 uh, freestanding awning. Uh, this is the first time we've had it out. Um, no real dramas installing it, but uh, it, it yeah works alright, we got it out easy enough and it just barely fits between the car and the caravan with the caravan still attached, so that was pretty handy. Um, we've got our King's fridge in here, which I haven't done a review on, but um, it's a uh, 40 litre fridge. Um, that's working without any problems. It's been keeping our drinks cold the entire time and uh, running off the uh, uh, 135 amp battery without any hassles. The only real hassle I had was this uh, this cover just after we bought it. The stitching around the fly net that goes with the uh, the motor and that is um, the stitching broke. Big deal. Um, the awnings have been hanging up to the wind all right. It's only been a slight breeze, but it's certainly standing in all right. There's no dramas there. Um, I also just recently bought uh, one of these uh, one of these lights up the top here. I can get it out of the sun. And you can see it there. I'll put a photo when when he ha had it going last night. And um, cost me I can't remember about 45 bucks, 50 bucks or something on eBay. And uh, plugs in the 12 volt and lights the joint up the whole campsite's all very well lit so that's a that's a bloody uh, a good buy that one um, one of my kids bought a king single axle single axle <laughs> single person um, swag on the um, stretcher bed and she seems to be quite happy in that particularly because she's off the ground one of my other daughters she's got a twin uh, one but it's on the ground um, they got a bit wet the other day when it was raining, but they were quite warm and everything inside. My old um, rooftop tent, officially now, everybody else has used it more than I have, but uh, still going strong and working well. Um, get around this fire pit here. Um, another one of my kids, we put this awning, another King's awning. Um, we're not sponsored by Kings, but you're beginning to think we would, wouldn't you? However, Kings, if you're interested, emails down below. Um, this is their other 270 awning. It's not a freestanding one. Uh, it's a bit more of a drama to get it. It actually took us three of us to put it up. Um, but they reckon you can do it with one person. But yeah, I think at least two people. Um, but, you know, it's, it's standing up and holding up to the breeze, all right. There's no dramas there. Um, what else we got around here? Um, oh, I've got my satellite on TV. It took me two days to get the thing to bloody work properly, but uh, it, uh, it's working good now. We've got TV so I can watch the news and see what's going on. Um, what else we got? Oh, the uh, diesel heater that I just not too long ago installed. That worked great when we went down to Bustleton and then um, a month after we got home I went to turn it on because they say you should run a diesel heater 
uh, every month just for a little bit to keep it going and it didn't work and I didn't know whether the control panel or the um, circuit board inside it had died so in the end I ended up buying a new control panel and circuit board I think that cost me about 50 bucks um, and I replaced the panel first because it was the easiest it's just unclip one and clip the other one in and it started working so I've now put in a 12 volt switch uh, I've put in a switch to turn the 12 volt off and on so once the uh, the diesel heater has turned off and gone through its cool down per, uh, process then I'll switch it off so there's no actual power going to it just in case it's caused a problem but I've also sort of read that uh, some diesel heaters have a habit of turning on by themselves for whatever reason so putting that switch in there will stop that from happening uh, but it does work it's been damn cold nights out here and um, the diesel heater you put it on and after about 15 minutes it's nice and warm and it, as I said this is a 5 kilowatt uh, unit here and it just perks a lot, perks a lot percolates along just nice and quietly uh, in low mode if you had a 2 kilowatt it would have to run harder to do the same job and make more noise where with the five it just idles along at low and the place is nice and warm within about 15 20 minutes sort of thing um yep i think that's pretty much about all i can say about uh current products i've been using um we're leaving here tomorrow and uh, going to go to Estonia. Going to try to see if we can get um, uh, a couple of nights stay in the caravan park because everyone's hanging out for a um, for a shower. And uh, I'm just about out of water in the caravan. We've gone four days of this, so that's not bad. And uh, so yeah, a bit of a stay in the caravan park, and then we'll have another couple of nights uh, in another bush camp somewhere. So I guess until uh, next time, we'll talk to you then. Well, as the sun sets on another perfect day, it's time to sit back and relax some more. Before we hit the road tomorrow for the luxury of a caravan park in Westonia. Join us next time when we check out this interesting town and find out the story of how this town was transformed from closing one week to thriving the next after an all night meeting around the bar. So till then, help the channel grow by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss another video. It's all free. And leave a comment if you've been here and your thoughts on the place. So till then, happy travels.